My name's Gail Cumming, and I'm an advocate. Um, the problem I have is not legislation. And if you look at the legislation, most of it was changed in 1981. So what's changed now to them is the employer's input and is their interpretation of policy. So when you say you have to take it back to legislation and the policy change is the one that has to do it, that's an internal process. The politicians have no say over that. So you're speaking up at a dead road. You climb that cliff that's not going to happen. The president of WCP is responsible for what's happening at WCP. And that's where you have to take it at home. So you really don't want to change all the legislation. But what I see is 50% of the calls I get, I can't help because of one change they made in 1996, I believe, the one year time limit to appeal. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is correct. You shouldn't be uh, found fit for work uh, when it's not suitable work. What do you do? You appeal. You will win that at the Appeals Commission. You can't get to the Appeals Commission now because you have one year. By the time you figure it out, by the time you get a representative, you miss the one year. So that's the cost savings where WCB, if you look at stats from 1996, they're cutting out appeals. They say you can go to the chairman of the DRB and request for them to overlook it. I have seen two where they have waived the time limit. So it's not a bias, it's a biased process to get the appeal waived, the time limit. So if you are approaching politicians, approach that section 43 time limit and you will help all workers. When we say that the employers are cost savings, pressure WCB when they are giving all that money back to employers because of safety, to put it back into safety programs instead of their own money. Politicians can do that. Yes. So when you look at where that money's going back to employers, into their pockets, make them and force them to put it back into health and safety. These are the things that I see as an advocate. Rachel is a great voice, and she is a politician that um, has helped me greatly, but we make no progress in changing that because we don't have the people. You have the people but you don't have the voice. I have the people, I don't have the voice. Where do we get a voice? So that is the problem, is we need a voice and we need a clear understanding that it's not the government that has any power over WCB other than changing legislation. It's the president of the WCB that has to be taken to task. And so I, I hope you appreciate that. I know I'm not here to speak, but the one question I have for Gil is, I love you on the news, pigs with lipsticks, I love all your comments. The foreign workers now is another concern. Rachel and I went to the media a few years ago regarding that. There is no legislation for out of province and foreign workers, and your unions have a lot. Have you considered that, WCB, perspective on foreign workers and out of province workers, that there should be legislation that protects them? Because we're now recognizing foreign workers a problem here and a concern. So what are we going to do to help foreign workers that are here? There's no legislation. The other thing is WCB does not recognize pain. There's no legislation for pain. There's no recognition for pain. So where do we go from there? We add legislation rather than take away. When you look at WCB, they do not recognize um, permanent total disability or um, cancer. Can you believe it? And one more thing I want um, the people here to know. The cheapest claim at the WCB is a fatality for a single man that is not married. In other words, if that single man is killed on the job instantly, he gets his funeral paid for. If you have somebody that lives 31 days, they get $83,000. So, in my will, I put that if I'm killed, or if I'm remained on the job, keep me on life support. True story, for 31 days, so WCB pays my family. Nobody knows that, because it's not legislation. So fatality, when you see that fatality, you must know if they are not married or have children, that is the cheapest claim at the board. So do they really care about the fatality? But the foreign workers is not concerned. 
and the knowledge that you have, and I appreciate Donna, who spoke to her many times, that the word has to get out there, the pressure has to be on WCB. And why you're not making any headway with the politicians is because they have no sales deals. Only the changes that are brought forward for legislation is what the politicians can do. So that time limit is the biggest area. So you must have that time to change. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Actually, Gail, yes, go ahead. Gail was going to answer. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, no, it's just the Gail raised a whole bunch of really important points, and I don't want to lose them. Um, I don't entirely agree with your interpretation and everything, but a couple of things that I really do agree with you is the importance of uh, Focus. If, if we want to make change, one of the most effective ways to make change is to be very focused um, and specific in what we ask for. Because if we simply have uh, a blanket criticism of the WCD or any other program, um, it's, e it's easier for policymakers to shrug us off. So when you say that we should be targeting things like uh, the one-year time limit, uh, or, um, you know, that, that's a really good example, but when, when, we're, when we go to policymakers um, and ask them to make change, it's a, a lot harder for them to wiggle off the hook if we have something very specific. And so that's a perfect example of, uh, of, 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 of something that we can hang our hat on in terms of lobbying. Uh, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a lobbyable issue, right? Uh, and it's something that, that the general public can understand very quickly. Right? which helps in terms of making your efforts more successful. On that point though, I would disagree with you that it's not political because something like that could be written into legislation. I mean, it is part of the legislation. And so uh, when dealing with politicians, yes, the problem is internal to the WCB, but we can fix problems that are internal to the WCB by changing the rules that they play by, right? So. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't entirely say that, uh, I wouldn't let the politicians off the hook. They, at the end of the day, they're the ones who make the rules. And if we want to fix the way the organization works, we have one of the avenues is to deal with the rules. Um, Manny raised a lot of other questions. The, the, w, the, 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 the temporary foreign workers, yeah, that is actually on our radar. Um, and uh, I mean, it's it, we've our federation has produced five reports now on the situation with temporary foreign workers, and that's been in every single report. Uh, we've had conversations with the federal government, which is responsible for the program. Uh, but now that the Harper government has 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 its long sought after majority, uh, a lot of our concerns about the temporary foreign worker program, uh, including the concerns to, related to WCB, have just fallen on deaf ears. Um, the final thing I'll say uh, about, um, and this goes back to the, the experience rating thing, you, you talked about how employers are getting all sorts of rebates uh, at, at the end of every year. Um, and, and one of the things that they're doing in Manitoba, which I think is very hopeful, is that instead of making the, one, one of the things that the report that the commission recommends is that instead of making um, uh, premiums contingent on claims experience, they're suggesting that premiums should be made contingent on proof of workplace health and safety program. So if they can, if they actually, if an employer can demonstrate they've actually spent the money and spent the time to make their, their workplaces safer, then they get a, then they get a premium discount. And, and I think that that's another concrete thing that we could, like once Manitoba puts that in place, we'll be able to point to it and say, look, here's, here's a best case. Here's a best practice that should be implemented across the country. And, that, and then once again, it goes back to the politicians. Well, we say, well, the politicians in Manitoba had the foresight to see the problem and fix it with this measure. And that's, that's another way to, another way that we can make, you know, sort of a, a more lobbyable target, right? Okay, we'll take a couple, we, we're running short on time, so we have to be brief. Go ahead, sir. Get for 
of our beers aim to get comedians up, like because they'll, they'll, they'll be cheap manpower for these non union companies. And uh, that's the way I feel it'll happen. Okay, I got a question. Why do they have, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, like a CEO for WAWCD? Like, I thought it was. At one time, wasn't it a, a government entity? And they, it seems like now that they're like an insurance company, any other insurance company that you should be able to buy shares of. I mean, I don't know. So, what's your question? My question is uh, I don't know. I, I like. You okay. Get somebody that, that is. is uh, wants to uh, make the government to uh, say they get hurt at work and they give them a, an easier job. Well, what happens when the layoff happens? And then two years down the road, he's still got the same problem, right? But does he get any help or, or is, it, is it just because he didn't file a claim at that time because they talked about it? I don't know. It just seems like a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> okay, yeah. Did you have a question? Okay. Did they go to the other team? Did they go to the other I don't know that we really had a question. I think we have comments. I think the question was what happens to somebody who doesn't have to report their claim? Am I right? I'm sorry. Your question is what happens to somebody who doesn't report their claim yeah. down the road? Yeah. See, it's a very good question because, you know, we started off with five points on our petition and we ended up with about ten. I've just added two more here. <laughs> one is the one-year rule and the other is why is it legal um, not to report an injury at work? It should be illegal for an employer not to report an injury at work. It should be a, a violation of the act because Absolutely, a worker who doesn't report their injury is out of luck when that injury turns into a permanent injury down the line or they can no longer do the job they did before. And you try and get a, a lawyer in this province and uh, just, just to add a bit to what they say, I think one of the things we've seen over the years, and it goes back to Gil's point about incentives and, and how, the, how those lead to certain consequences, and we watched that. Um, the uh, lost time claim rate drop, and we watch the return to work get abused. And what happens for a lot of workers, we see the story over and over again, is that they basically will choose to work injured or maybe go on, on uh, long-term disability because the, the consequence or the attempt to get WCB is such a painful experience that they might as well stay working at whatever the employer will give them. So there's a lot of these informal accommodations and return to work situations where uh, a worker will take the the, the relatively painless position of, of not having to prove it happened to work and uh, go on disability or sick leave or take whatever's there and until that runs out with the layoff. And then you see all kinds of things. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got one more quick question. Like I just came back from DC, you know, uh, Elkhorn Avenue, there's a lot of people that work there. Is that a good place to work? Yeah, it's a good place to work. Sir, I, I'm going to ask you at this time if you could hold your question maybe till after because we're running short and we've got to get the film going. And I think this lady here had a question. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, yeah, for a while now. So uh, I asked you guys to speak after the sister spoke here. And while you uh, had a, a great deal to say, I respectfully disagree with the fundamental underlying thing I heard you say. For me, anytime there's ever an issue, be it WCB, be it poverty, be it Occupy, whatever dictates our world from education to food deserts to whatever it is that we live in, breathe in our world, it's always politics. And until and unless we support people that support us, be us workers or mothers or fathers or environmentalists, whatever like this, until we take care of our earth and each other and go MVP each and every time because that's the closest affiliated party with morality, then we're screwed. And so when people go off and talk, I don't vote, or I vote liberal, or the conservatives have good fiscal management, 
we got to take your heads and bang them up against the wall. <laughs> it just doesn't work for us. So everything we do at the core is politics. And until we get that, we won't get nothing. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, thank everybody.